Okay guys, so I'm out here tonight <clears throat> painting a grill and I figured I'd do a video on uh, how I paint chrome. Now, a lot of body shops won't even won't even paint chrome uh, because they can't you know guarantee that it's gonna stay on and not flake off. But uh, what I do here, uh, I have grills that are pretty old and their paint's still holding pretty good. So, figured I'd do a video on it. Um, right now, I have got the, the grill all scuffed. Um, you're gonna wanna scuff the chrome really good, guys. Uh, you can use a scuff pad or, <clears throat> I actually went over this hood with, uh, or not this hood, this grill with, uh, I actually wet sanded it with 400 grit. And 400 grit is what you need uh, the surface to be to, to put paint down. 400 grit is the smoothness. Uh, if you go any more aggressive than that, you're going to start seeing scratch marks uh, in your paint. So you got to get your stuff to 400 grit. Uh, really all I need to do is scuff this painted part. All it needs to be is scuffed. Um, you want to really scuff this chrome pretty good guys to, to give your paint something to grab a hold of. And then uh, obviously you're going to want to clean it off really good. I usually wipe it down with a, a grease and wax remover or a paint cleaner. So I'm really right now I'm all ready for the next step which is the main step in, uh, in painting chrome is I'm going to lay down a couple light coats of etching primer. Uh, that uh, was taught to me a long time ago when I first started getting into painting and I was uh, color matching all my trucks well you know bumpers and and grills are chrome so you know to color match those uh, you gotta paint them and, and and back then there wasn't really so much aftermarket right now you can get you can get these grills in uh, black uh, paintable black uh, you know you don't have to order the chrome ones anymore uh, but if you have a chrome grill, you, you got to paint it. Uh, this is also an OEM grill. Uh, they don't get much better than that. Uh, it does have some damage. Uh, my dad actually hit an owl or something. I forgot what it was, a hawk or something. But uh, I'm going to be covering that anyway so it don't matter that that's broke out. Uh, anyway, the, the rest of the grill is, is really good. This actually took a deer hit too and it's still... Uh, okay, but anyway, I had a little bit of chrome peeling right here and I had to kind of scrape that off and I filled it in because uh, this older chrome a lot of times will start will start bubbling and, and peeling off so I did had to I did have to address that but anyway, uh, I'm gonna do the etching primer um, on top of just the chrome. I'm not going to worry about the other stuff. Just just the chrome is where you put the etching primer on. You can go ahead and etch primer the whole thing if you want. But uh, being that this has got, this is already factory painted here, so I'm not really going to worry about that. That should be able to be scuffed and then and painted. So I'm just going to hit the chrome parts. Okay, so while I'm here mixing some paint up, uh, I get a lot of questions about the paint that I use. And I use uh, automotive type paint that uh, you need to mix up and you gotta spray with a gun. And um, a lot of the stuff I use is the Nason. Uh, that used to be uh, DuPont. The, the DuPont paint, uh, it was bought out by um, Exalta. So it's not DuPont anymore, but the Nason is the cheaper version of the, the better stuff that they sell. And I, I usually use the primers and uh, clear coats and stuff in the Nason. And then I'll, the colors, I'll actually go with the better stuff. But um, 
Yeah, that's what I use. I, I, I was switching over to the eBay year cam, and that seems to be pretty good stuff too. But um, it does take a little while to ship because I think it's considered hazardous material. And um, the only reason I went with those guys is because our local store stopped selling paint. So it was a little bit of a drive to actually get paint. So I started switching over to the year cam and then, uh, then they started selling the paint at the local store again. So I kind of went back to them just because it's easier to get stuff. If I need a quarter primer, I just you know, 10 minutes away or whatever, and I get some primer. And they and they can also mix up paint. Uh, they actually have a gun there, too, that you can match, color match. It'll shoot the paint and get the paint code for you. So that's um, pretty handy, too. But anyway, guys, I got to get to mixing this paint up so I can start priming this grill. Okay, guys, so I'm mixing up my paint. Right now, the etching primer again this is the the nason stuff i actually got this i think for dad's car but we ended up using some other um, epoxy for his bare metal but that's what this etching primer is usually for is for bare metal and this has been sitting for a while so i really like to mix it up really good actually you want to mix this stuff up really good um, when you're when you're mixing it in your cup and everything you really want it mixed around because all these chemicals When they get mixed around that's what causes them to dry and everything so Also, you got to be accurate with your measurements um, If it says one to one well, that's pretty easy, but some of these are can be uh, Four to one to three or something if there's three things you got to mix up and you just got to pay attention to, to your measurements. This is actually, like I said, pretty easy. It's one to one. So it's one part, one part paint, one part uh, reducer. So I got to figure out uh, what I need here. You don't want to over mix this stuff because none of this stuff is cheap. So you want to try to mix up just what you need to get the job done. I got a strainer. <clears throat> you always want to strain your paint because you never know what, what stuff is in there. I think I'm going to mix up uh, 8 ounces here. Should get me, uh, actually that's probably too much. Probably should have done about 6 ounces, but it'll give me some extra if I want to put a few more coats on it. So there we go, we got four ounces of the primer, four ounces of the converter. Mix this up real good. Usually when you're stirring it, you can see when it's mixed up good because it'll 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 change. You can see it and feel it. This is probably way eight ounces is probably way too much for this, but especially if I'm just doing the the chrome.
So I actually use a liner system in my gun. It just helps clean things up or keep, keep the gun cleaner. Uh, I got an old <coughs> uh, DeVille Bis uh, finish line gun. It, it's pretty old. I've had this for a really long time, but um, it's still going and uh, it sprays pretty good. I got all different types of tips, different size tips so I can spray thicker material or the thinner material. But I'm uh, just about ready to, to spray this here. It's going to blow off my, my grill. Well, you really only need a few light coats, guys. I like to put a little more on, but you really only need a few light coats. But if I have more paint, I usually put it on there. If I don't have uh, more paint, I usually just do a few coats. But that's just uh, my first light coat. I'm gonna give this a flash time. Usually your paint will have a flash time of how long it needs to, to dry before you do the next coat. So I'm gonna wait for that. Usually 10 to 15 minutes usually on uh, this kind of paint. But I'm gonna get this uh, primed up so we can move to the next step. Okay, so I've uh, sprayed this. I've let it sit for about an hour. I think they said 30 to 40 minutes. So I just give it a little more time before I start my uh, primer. And you can see I did go on the plastic parts a little and bit. You can put paint right over top of the etching primer, but I have found that sometimes this, this, this olive color likes to bleed through depending on uh, what colors you have. Seems like the lighter colors were worse than, uh, than others, but I'm going to prime it just to keep that uh, olive color from bleeding through. But I have painted it many times the, just uh, over the etching primer. So I'm going to get this primed uh, so this can start flashing so we can get some uh, color and then we got to put the clear on it. So I got to get to it. So I got it primed. Uh, this is actually what they call a beige. This is all I had to, to work with. So it's what I'm working with right now. Should be close enough, I think, to the light, really light gray GM used. Um, 
we're not looking for perfection here. As long as we get close to the sport red uh, metallic that uh, was on it, we'll be all right. But if you wanted perfection, uh, I believe GM used a really light gray for their primers under all this stuff. So we'll let that uh, flash off. I think I got a little bit of debris in there. I'm going to sand with the 400 grit. We'll get that off. And then uh, we'll be spraying the color. Okay guys, so enough time has passed that this primer is dry. Um, you can hear in the background the heat is on. That's another thing guys is the temperature has to be right for all these these paints and chemicals to cure so if you're trying the the paint when it's below freezing or really cold or something uh it's not probably going to work out for you um, read the directions on your paint that's going to tell you the temperature that the the paints can be sprayed in and follow those directions <clears throat> If you don't follow the directions, your results are not going to be uh, what you want them to be. So pay attention. Temperature is another big thing when you're painting. Anyway, guys, I just took some uh, 400 grit. There was a few little nubbies in there that I didn't like. Uh, this is uh, the last time that uh, you can do that because I'm going with the color coat next. Once we get the, the color coat on there. We'll be doing the clear coat, and uh, we'll be done with this. So there's the color, guys. I believe that's Sport Red Metallic. So we're going to get it sprayed. Well, you can see there, this thing is shiny now. I cleared this, oh, 20 minutes ago or so. And it looks pretty darn good, guys. I put uh, two coats, two good coats of clear usually is what I do. And it's looking good. So I know I didn't show me spraying this clear. Uh, I don't really like to film the clear coat because it sticks to everything. I don't really feel like uh, wrecking my camera, but um, it, it really takes a technique to get it down. Uh, usually when you're first starting out painting, uh, you're really scared of runs. So then they, you put it on too light and then you get really bad orange peel. Uh, some people go the other way where they don't want the orange peel so they lay it on so thick that there's runs everywhere. In uh, both instances, uh, you know, orange peel or really bad runs, they're both not good. There's a real fine line. You kind of got to learn it. Uh, you got to push. You got to kind of push it with the clear coat. Um, you push it too far and you get runs you don't do it enough you get orange peel it's just something you got to learn but i can lay it down pretty much like a like a factory paint now and then you can all you can all always uh you know if you really want to go crazy wet sand and buff i don't do show vehicles guys so i usually don't do that uh, you can wet sand and buff to get the trash out if you want I've found that the little bit of trash that I usually get in there, once the truck is outside and it's, and it's dirty, most of the time you don't even see it. So 
I really don't even usually bother with that. Uh, there is a little bit of trash in this. It's, it's not perfect by any means. Uh, you really need a paint booth uh, if you're going to eliminate all your, your trash in the, in the paint. And uh, I'm not too concerned with this right here because that's under the hood. And this is not by any means going to be a show vehicle. Just want it to, to look good. So I guess guys that's uh, how I paint a grill and I know there's a lot of YouTube videos out there people painting with uh, you know the spray cans and stuff and saying you know you can get professional results with a, with a can and everything and you know I have a little bit of a problem with that because uh, you can see in the camera this thing looks good. Um, and it looks good in person too. Uh, you can spray, uh, use spray cans and you can take video of it and it will look really good on video and pictures but in, in real life it looks bad guys and uh, you really need to use professional paints if you want professional results and equipment too. You really need a gun, paint gun you can't get professional results from a spray can guys um, I'd have to see it in person to believe that but uh, same with that the plasti dip kind of is going crazy there and it looks good on camera and everything but once you spray that out and uh, in real life it, it just doesn't look very good guys it just looks kind of like a bad paint job that's what the plasti dip reminds me of but anyway guys, I guess that's going to do it for this one. I'll uh, get this on the truck as soon as I can and uh, we'll get some more video. But hopefully you enjoyed it. I guess I'll see you.